a mysterious factory where monsters are built to unleash hell on Earth. Will the superheroes be successful in destroying the factory? Let's find out, as today, on Story Recaps, we will be covering the first four episodes of the series, Miss Koroitsu from the Monster Development Department. The series opens up with Magistus, the chief of staff of the evil secret society known as Agastia, appearing in front of their leader, Akashic, and explaining to her the current situation of the monsters around the world. He also tells her how the organization is struggling struggling against superheroes of their rival groups. When Akashic asks him about what his plans are to counter the superheroes, he replies that he has already ordered the Monster Development Department to come up with a proposal for a new powerful monster. The scene then shifts to the Monster Development Department lab, where Kuroitsu, the lab assistant, is not happy with her senior, Dr. Sadamaki. Kuroitsu is actually having problems with presenting a lame proposal of a monster in front of the Agasta board members. At first, Kuroitsu refuses to handle the presentation, but after Dr. Sadamaki insists, she is forced to do so. In the next scene, Kuroitsu enters the stage and introduces their freshly designed monster in front of the Agastya board. She then displays a picture of the creature that resembles an elderly guy clutching a sword while wearing a Nessie-like mascot suit. One can clearly see that Kuroitsu is upset with her supervisor, Dr. Sadamaki for pressuring her to make a hastily thrown together proposal before the Agastya board. The board members immediately start picking out the odd points about the monster, but despite this, Kuroitsu continues to defend herself and makes up some special abilities about the monster. Surprisingly, Akashic likes the idea of the monster, but Magistus quickly rejects it, mentioning that the idea is lame and needs to be revised. After the failed presentation, Magistus visits the monster development department and states that he is well aware that the proposal was designed at the last minute. Hearing this, Kuroitsu blames Dr. Sadamaki, mentioning that he is the one who designed it late and forced her to present. Despite this, Magistus asks them to take rest for a few days and be back at work with full dedication and concentration. Before leaving, he praises Kuroitsu for improvising the skills of the monster and asks her to keep up the good work. Later, after purchasing some snacks, snacks from a nearby restaurant run by a young owner, Kenji, Kuroitsu, and Sadamaki can be seen working on some of the finishing touches on Wolf Bait. Wolf Bait is actually a vicious wolfman who has been training in a virtual world until his body is fully designed. In the following scene, when Wolf Bait's body is fully designed and ready for use, Wolf Bait discovers that he has the body of a girl but the mind of a male wolf monster, leaving him with gender dysphoria. Enraged, he argues argues with Kuroitsu and Sadamaki. Here, it is revealed how Akashic's last-minute request for a cute monster compelled the group to alter the body of the wolfman into wolf woman. Kuroitsu also mentions that because of the short time, they were not able to update her mental abilities. Later that evening, Wolfbait attacks the superhero, Divine Swordsman Blader, who is later revealed to be Kenji's secret identity. Wolfbait believes that if he defeats Blader, then he will be able to obtain a reward, that is the Wolfman's body. But sadly, the fight ends in a draw because of Blader's lack of experience with women and Wolfbait's embarrassment at being caught naked. The next day, after Sadamaki suffers from food poisoning due to his own carelessness, Kuroitsu is forced to replace Sadamaki on a work trip to Kyushu to investigate how a comparable, evil organization like theirs deals with battling superheroes. During the journey, Kuroitsu sticks close to Magistus and tells him how she got informed about the trip at the very last minute. Magistus appreciates her presence and offers her some food before he starts working while on the train. Kuroitsu is in awe of Magistus' ability to compartmentalize his brain so that he may work well for the business, evaluate the numerous items created by Agastya's affiliates, and relax at the same time. Magistus's brain is actually divided into four compartments, because of which he is able to do four parallel tasks in a single go. Kuroitsu feels awkward taking a rest while she can clearly see Magistus working beside her. After the train journey, the two of them arrive at a hotel in Kyushu. As Magistus has booked only one room for himself and Sadamaki, he now has a problem sharing the room with Kuroitsu. So, out of consideration as Kuroitsu Kuroitsu is a girl, Magistus offers Kuroitsu his hotel room and stays the night at a neighboring hostel, sleeping on the floor 
surrounded by the people. The scene then shifts back to Agastya's headquarters, where Bait can be seen arguing with Sadamaki and Kuroitsu for providing him with the body of a wolfman. Though Bait continues to detest the adorable wolf girl body they provided him, he is now forced to work officially as the new member of the Monster Development Department. Kuroitsu mentions that because of the lack of assistance in the department, they have successfully hired Bait as one of their new members. She also tells Bait that she will take good care of her junior and will help her in every task assigned to her. Meanwhile, Sadamaki approaches Kuroitsu and Bait and introduces them to the most recent monster suggested by the department. He presents the designs of the Canon Thunderbird, a huge mecha-like bird monster with rail guns and thunderstrike capabilities. However, because of the extensive usage of mechanical components in Canon Thunderbird, the team is compelled to work in concert with other Agastya departments as well as the whims of its commander, Akashic. The Monster Development Committee designed Canon Thunderbird undergoes several iterations throughout various departments of the Agastya. As a result, it turns out to be a huge talking bird with a straightforward visor and headband. The whole Agastya members become proud of their hard work and even celebrate the completion of the manufacturing process of Canon Thunderbird within the submission deadline. To their bad luck, Blader easily defeats Canon Thunderbird in their first encounter leaving Blader to question why Agastya didn't turn the creature into a massive mech that was armed heavily. The following scene opens with an introduction of a new monster, Hydra, containing a Hydra above its head. Blader effortlessly defeats Kuroitsu's Hydra containing monster. Later that evening, Kenji questions himself if he would be able to support himself by juggling his part-time work and becoming a Blader. In the meantime, Kuroitsu visits Kenji's restaurant and orders some food for herself and for her department members. During their conversation, Kuroitsu mentions her hectic work schedule but does not tell Kenji about her work. After hearing Kuroitsu's misery, Kenji suggests she never compromise on her work and keep trying hard to make the outcome better. Listening to these motivational words, Kuroitsu rushes back to her office and immediately prepares a new design of the Hydra monster, adding two more heads to it. Unfortunately, the outcome is the same as the newly upgraded Hydra again loses to Blader. The next day, when Kuroitsu visits Kenji's restaurant, she can be seen carrying numerous bags of documents related to the study of the new monster. Unfortunately, when she steps inside, she tumbles and spills all of her documents. Kenji then helps her recollect the documents and inquires why she is carrying the heavy documents on her own. Kuroitsu replies that she just wants to find the solution to her office problem and help more people through her hard work. This accidentally prompts Kenji to recall all the reason he decided to become a blader in the first place. Later, after Kuroitsu leaves the restaurant, Kenji remembers that he became a blader to help people in need and to fulfill their wishes. After losing a job interview in Agastya, Canon Thunderbird experiences an existential crisis. Because of this, he goes to the Agastya affiliated theme park and volunteers in distributing balloons to the kids. During this time, he notices Hydra being attacked by two magical girls, Rose and Yuto, who claim to protect the city from bad forces. As Hydra Hydra is being attacked by the duo of magical girls, Cannon arrives at her rescue and carries her away at great speed. Furthermore, when the duo follows him and tries to attack him, he takes out his revolver and fires a shot at Rose, destroying her magical weapon. He also uses his power of creating thunder and strikes the twins. After that, the twins retreat and Cannon successfully takes Hydra away. In the following scene, Blader just knocks a newly magnetically powered monster created by Agastya in the face after lowering his blade and creating a huge power. The monster then returns to the monster department, where he is asked to sign a document mentioning his future improvements and commitments. The following day, while working in the lab, Sadamaki and Kuroitsu complain about the fact that they do not have enough materials and technology to build a monster that they actually design, with full powers and cruelty. At the same time, Immortal Kamula, an Agastya executive, approaches the Monster Development Department and intends to conduct an audit of their recent performance. Kamula then starts finding faults in the Monster Development Department's work quality and accuses them of just passing away their time rather than working hard. After hearing 
hearing all this, Kuroitsu finds Kamula is made up of different cells and requests Kamula to provide them with some of her pluripotent cells for the research purpose of creating a new monster. But to their bad luck, Kamula refuses to provide them with any of her cells and rather asks Kuroitsu to fight her and get what she wants. Kuroitsu tries her best to fight Kamela and also asks Bait for help but to no success. Kamela defeats them with ease and threatens them to make some improvements in the monster development program before her next inspection. The next day, Kuroitsu brings Bait and Akashic to Leafland, aka the Agastya affiliated theme park, to evaluate the theme park. But Bait and Akashic are just interested in having fun, while Kuroitsu observes the park's monster employees. Akashic asks Bait to buy her a balloon, but as she notices that a little girl is crying for the same balloon, she buys it and hands it over to her. Later, while roaming around the park, Wolfbait notices the small girl she gifted the balloon to before being scolded by a huge man who accuses her of ruining his ice cream. Bait then confronts the man and fights against him. Later, the man turns out to be the White Alligator, a monster belonging to a rival group. When Bait fails to defeat the White Alligator and gets badly injured, Akashic comes to her help and completely obliterates the competitor monster. In the last scene, the monster development department can be seen panicking and trying their best to rebuild the destroyed monster, the White Alligator, before the rival organization learns and turns on Agastya.